Stephanie Finn, department head at Moses Middle School, and we have been doing the Georgia Numeracy Project since the, about the second nine weeks of school. The G Georgia Numeracy Project is a free project. It's a free product that comes from the Georgia Standards website. And it's um, the materials are very accessible and it's easy for us to get to. Plus, we have a lot of those materials here in our math department at Moses. chose our students for our MBI live class, so which is what we call it here at Moses, doing a triangulation of sorts. We looked at milestone data, but the latest we had was 2019. We also looked at MI scores and we looked at teacher recommendation because we kind of wanted some kids who we knew would benefit from the program. And sometimes just looking at a test score doesn't tell us that. So we got those lists together and we performed what's called a gloss on those students. The gloss is a gives questions to the student and they are scripted. So the student will answer the question, but as you're giving the gloss, you look to see how the student is answering the question. Are they counting on their fingers? Or do they have some other kind of strategies? And that helps us to put them into a level. And then that level tells us where to start with the Georgia Numeracy Project. Uh, we have noticed that students who struggle in math tend to struggle because they're missing um, some important information, like gaps from a long time ago, before they even get to middle school. And the Georgia Numeracy Project helps to identify those gaps and helps us to fill those by doing fun games that are very engaging to the students. The students don't realize what they're doing is practicing math skills. Maybe it's adding and subtracting fluency that they're practicing, but they think, they think they're playing a game. And so they're really enjoying it. They're really engaged, hands-on activities every single day, and they're really getting a lot from it. So to track our data, we do ask a question. If they get that question right, then they move on to the next section. So we're working on developing a tool that's easy for teachers to track the data. Um, the question may be something like, what's 10 less than a thousand? Which may be easy for you, but some of our, our kiddos can't really do that. So once they have gone through the program to be able to answer that question fluently, and then they get that question right, we move them on to their next skill. So at Moses, we've adapted it a little bit to make it teacher friendly and student friendly. And each of our teachers is able to put their own spin and their own flair into their, into their class each day, as I'm sure you will see as you watch the video. We're going to start with this still, and then we'll move into the activity. All right, let's go left hand and left pinky. Everybody go with that. Nine times one, nine. It's too easy. That's too easy. Left hand. That one. <sighs> Nobody's gotten a hard one yet. There it is. 108. Yeah, good. Nine. Excellent. Well, anytime you have a 10 and you multiply it by the number, you can just add a zero onto the end, right? I did multiplication wrong. I know I did. Don't even look at it. How'd you do it wrong? Let's see. No, don't look at it. Don't look at it? Okay. I won't look at it. I'll move on. <laughs> Times two. So three and three. Nine. So three times three is what? Nine. So is that on your list? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Seven. That's right. And is it on your list? Mm -hmm. Dividing wise might be kind of hard, right? So if it's seven yeah. divided by zero, yeah. Yeah, so that really doesn't work out, right? All right, good. So then you, your turn. Bowling, so you roll the dice and it's adding and subtracting. So you have to figure out like, my first roll was a six, a five and a three. So I did six plus five, which is 11 minus three is eight. So I, so I crossed out the eight since that was my answer. And yeah, that's 
and the point of the game is trying to get your whole like bowling pins to get knocked yeah, off. Yeah, so you, you have get to. You have to like if you, if and all your bowling pins are out, you get a strike and you get stamps for getting. Yes, you get five stamps if you are. So the New Mercy Project began with an MBI resource for our district, um, and Miss Finn had you pilot. And so when we went to pilot, what did that kind of look like? What has it evolved into? At first, it was a little bit overwhelming. We had to gloss our kids, so we had to um, basically spend like five to ten minutes with every kid, really asking them to do basic math problems and looking at how they answered them, not just, yes, they got it, or no, they didn't get it, but how they got to their answer. But once we did that, we were able to come up with the level that they were on, like a one, two, three, four, five. But once I started weeding out what would be easy for me and what would be really difficult for me, I was able to find one activity for each level like 4.1 or 4.2 or 4.3 that I really liked as a teacher that I thought my kids would enjoy. I would go up to the board and kind of practice like model what our activity was supposed to look like for that day and then the kids partner off and do it and so now we'll have days on Friday where I say okay you can pick one of four activities to do to repractice. Sometimes we do the same activity for two or three days in a row and the kids never get sick of it. They basically, all of the kids now want to be in my live class because they think, they think that they are coming <laughs> here to just like play games for like a free hour of the day. All we have to do is roll dice and play games and that sounds so fun and easy, but it's truly a skill that my kids in class are lacking. Like I didn't, I didn't quite realize that they didn't know <laughs> like five minus two is three. And that's where they're getting stuff wrong in class. They know how to do it. They just don't have the math skills behind them to do it. And when I take away the calculator in class, they're lost because they don't have the basic adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing number sense of truly, like my kids are only working with numbers less than 10. Most of the time it's less than nine. So it's helped them in class too, to know like I've been practicing adding. So when we're doing a problem and at the end we have to add two numbers together for surface area, they know they've at least added right. Maybe they didn't multiply right, but they know they added right. And if I can see that they're doing some little part right, that gives them more confidence than just saying, eh, you got the whole thing wrong. And yeah. as a teacher, you would have to go through and you have to decide what works for you. Like, I feel like some people would like the money challenges and the like poker chips and having them like do cool stuff like that. But I wasn't trying to do that. So I do a lot of activities where the kids are drawing something on a dry erase board. So I'm literally, I make no copies for this and I'm not having to plan the whole lesson. Like I just have to plan one example and then the kids do the rest of the work which makes my life easy. So yes. it's not as hard as it seems.